The Honourable Gentleman is absolutely right that this is about enabling the government to properly help the most genuine and vulnerable asylum seekers and refugees who come to this country. And currently, because of the influx of illegal migrants, because our modern slavery and asylum system has been overwhelmed, thanks to the efforts of the people smuggling gangs, we are unable to help those genuine victims for whom we owe a clear duty. Shadow Minister Stephen Kinnett. Mr Speaker, Mr Speaker. The government's new asylum legislation is a sham, which is set to worsen the backlog because they don't have the facilities to detain tens of thousands of asylum seekers and because they don't have a returns agreement in place with the EU to send those deemed inadmissible back. And for all her taxpayer-funded photo ops this weekend, the Home Secretary has seemingly failed to bung the Rwandan government enough money for them to increase the number of asylum seekers they're ready to take this year. Mr Speaker, for a deterrent to be effective, it has to be credible. Yet these plans are just empty threats. So can she tell us where she expects to detain the tens of thousands of asylum seekers forecast to arrive this year, where she expects to remove them to, when Rwanda clearly has no intention of taking more than a very small proportion of those who she expects to arrive this year, and when will this government get out of the way so that Labour can deliver its five-point plan to stop the boat crossings? Mr Speaker, I thank the Honourable Dunn for his entertaining uh, uh, as a t a t approach to entertaining the House today. But let's just compare what the Labour Party has done over the last 10 days and what the Government has done. In the last 10 days, the Prime Minister... In the last 10 days, the Prime Minister and I have secured a big deal with the French to increase cross-channel cooperation. I've presented and we've voted on measures to detain and swiftly remove illegal migrants. And this weekend, I met with refugees who have successfully been resettled in Rwanda and seen the accommodation that people will be using. What's, what's the Labour Party done? Well, the Shadow Home Secretary has been on Twitter. She's very good on Twitter. She tweeted in the last 10 days, Labour's paltry excuse for a plan. Half of it's stuff we're already doing. The other half is their plan for open borders and unlimited migration. What I suggest they do is get off Twitter, get to Rwanda, and I'll show them how to stop the boats. SNP spokesperson Alison Thulis. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Freedom from Torture have talked about the impact on torture survivors of the anti-asylum bill calling it a betrayal of the commitments following the Shore Review. Seven babies born to mothers in home office, uh, home office accommodation since 2020 have died. So it's no surprise that Women for Refugee Women and the RCM have opposed the Home Office's plans. And the Scotland's Children's Commissioner has warned that the plans to detain and remove children breach this government's obligations under the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. Yeah. There is nothing about protecting asylum seekers' welfare that this bill will fix. So will she accept the harm that she's causing? Yeah. Yeah. Home Secretary. Well, we take very uh, seriously our duties to everybody who is within our care, uh, and our measures will always, of course, uh, ensure that the proper well-being and welfare provision is available to those who are vulnerable. But let me just say this. She, the Honourable Lady, has absolutely no right to lecture this government on how to support asylum seekers when her own nation royally fails to take any or sufficient numbers into the Scotland. Yeah. Truth. That is simply, Mr Speaker, not correct. This, is, this bill is not about, an, about helping asylum seekers. This is about banning asylum seekers. So what does it say about the Home Secretary's models that she believes Rwanda be, would be a blessing for asylum seekers, but when they come here she calls them a swarm and an invasion? Ah. Well, Home Secretary. The, the problem that the Honourable Lady is labouring under is that she is, in her opposition to our plans, she is siding with the people smuggling gangs. She is actively encouraging, effectively, the, the, the co co cooperation and evil practice of exploitation of vulnerable people coming into this country. Vote for our measures, to stop the people smuggling gangs and stop the boats. Have a bardell. Question number two, please, Mr Speaker. Minister. Mr Speaker, with your permission, I'd like to group this question with question 14. 
The Prime Minister made a commitment on the 13th of December to clear the legacy backlog of asylum applications over the course of the year, and I'm pleased to report that we are on track to deliver this. We've already doubled the number of caseworkers and are on course to double the number again. We're streamlining processes to reduce unnecessary paperwork whilst maintaining robust standards. The productivity of caseworkers has more than doubled since the start of the year. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Speaker. My constituents, Mr and Mrs Leeson, have UK residency but are American citizens. They live in my Livingston constituency but they, and they are highly skilled, but they have had huge issues getting their niece, Carissa, who they have guardianship over, for, uh, a visa to come to Scotland. Now, a US court has ruled that they are her guardians, but they are being told they are going to have to wait six months for an administrative review. Would he meet with me to discuss this case? Because my uh, constituent and her niece are currently stuck in the US and this family are being separated. Well, I'd be happy Minister. to look into the case that the Honourable Lady raises. I would just say that with respect to visas, the UK visa service is now meeting or exceeding every one of its service standards. And so the government is providing a good service generally, but I'd be happy to look into that particular case. Mr Speaker, the Minister says that the government is providing a good service. That's not the experience that I've seen, not just with asylum cases, but across the piece, yeah. with so many cases of work visas, visitor visas and so on, delayed longer than I've seen in the 18 years that I've served as an MP, yeah. including in the role uh, that, that he has. So when will he get a grip? It's all very well saying dealing with asylum. It's like whack-a-mole. He puts effort into one area and another area goes badly wrong. When's he going to get a grip? Yeah. Well, I prefer I prefer to trade in facts. Uh, the facts are that in every single one of the visa categories, the UK visa service is at or exceeding the service standard. It is, it is, co it is correct that we moved a number of individuals off work and visit visas to ensure that we met the Homes for Ukraine schemes demand last year. Uh, but those people are now back on the job and the service is performing well. If the Right Honourable Lady has specific examples, I'd be happy to look into them.